Okay, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'd like to welcome you back to the class after your days of festivities and after your travels and all of that. I hope everybody is okay. Alhamdulillah. So we will continue. And my plan is, inshallah, that I wanted to um, continue finishing off this surah, surah Fusilat, and then, of course, we'll be closer to Ramadan. So if we finish between this week and next week, if we finish next week, then maybe the last two weeks, I was thinking if you all agree that we could do some um some uh, so talks on Ramadan, uh, like a question and answer. And yeah. we probably will have questions about like zakat and you know tarawi and what to say during after twenty four zakat of tarawi and so on. So we could um we could do do something like that if you all wish, like kind of interactive about Ramadan because there's so many things in Ramadan, you know, that we need to um to sort out, inshallah. All right, but yeah, so we will um, continue today, inshallah. So um, for those of you who were not here, we reached up to verse number 25. So we're on verse number 26 of Surah Fusilat, right? And um, so we'll start, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Verse number 26. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ Allah says, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And those who they disbelieved, they said, لَا تَسْمَعُوا Do not listen. Sami to here. لَا تَسْمَعُوا Do not listen. لِهَذَا Quran To this Quran. The the Quran that is being revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the disbelievers are being commanded by their leaders, the leaders of the Quraysh and the other disbelievers, do not listen lihad al Quran, wal ghaw, and, 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 and as well, wal ghaw and make noise from the verb al right to talk nonsense, right lagh. You know, Lagu is, is is talking frivolous talk. Lagu. So Allah says that the disbelievers are telling them their 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 people, their 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 followers, do not listen. La tasmau lihad al Quran wal ghaw and make noise fihi therein. Fi make noise when the Quran is being recited. Right? Talk nonsense. Right? Talk above the Quran. La Allakum Taglibun so that you may overcome. Right? You may overcome. Right? From a ghalaba to defeat or to conquer so that you may overcome the Quran because the Quran is a sense of guidance, isn't it? And the disbelievers and the leaders amongst the disbelievers do not want you to be guided. So they are telling you when this Quran is being recited, don't say anything. I mean, don't um, stay quiet. Don't listen. Right? Don't listen. So it is recorded in Hadith, Ibn Abbas, and he stated that Abu Jahl, he got his people primed up and ready to make noise whenever Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa recited the Quran. Whenever the Quran was being recited, he would make them make noise so that the people might not find out what he is saying because he doesn't want them to learn the Quran. Some have said that the preparations were made to stop people from listening to the Quran by whistling, whistling, that they would whistle, clapping, and by making all sorts of noises during the recitation. So, in other words, this from this as well, you know, and, and from this next verse, where Allah SWT says in the next verse. So that we will cause them, Alladina kafaru, those who disbelieve, to taste. We shall cause them to taste adaban shadidan, a severe punishment. Right? Aswa alladhi kanu ya'maloon. According to the worst of what they used to do. Because of the worst of, of what they used to do. Right? We will we will give them oh I'll leave it over there. Well and Najiziyan Nahum and we will give them a a a a, a, a reward 
we will reward them, we will give them a recompense, aswada alladhi kanu ya amalun, in accordance to the worst of what they used to do. In other words, as bad as they would recite, make noise, and the more that they would disrupt the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a punishment. And from this, you know, there is now this ruling that it is wajib to listen to the Quran when it is being recited, and it is sinful to speak when the Quran is being recited in a formal manner. So what we have happening now, lots of times, for example, people out of reverence and out with a good intention, you find that, you know, sometimes when there's a funeral, for example, they will put on a, a cassette. Now, long ago, not a cassette, but like a CD. Long ago, you know, people would only hear the Quran when somebody was reciting. But now they have, you can go on internet and you can play the Quran. And what is happening sometimes, you see this, the Quran is being recited, and everybody's talking. Can you do that in a business place? No, it shouldn't be done in a business place. If the Quran is to be recited, people should be quiet. If you have the Quran playing in a business place and people are buying and selling, that is in direct disrespect to the Quran. That is being disrespectful to the Quran. So Allah SWT, I mean, this is what the disbelievers used to do. They used to make noise so that the Quran would not be learned and it would not be listened to and it would not be followed. So that is why now it is wajib to listen to the Quran when it is being recited. And it, if it is that somebody is um, you know, um, involved in a conversation, then if you have to and you can't stop them, stop the Quran. Like, you know, in these funerals, right? You have to make the announcement. And if you make the announcement, everybody's still talking, then you should stop the Quran, maybe play something else, a lecture or something. But not to have the Quran playing and everybody's continuing as though, you know, it's some kind of background music. Right? The Quran is something to be listened to. So that is why, you know, this is what they used to do. And this is what, what a punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has said for these people that they are going to be punished with this, you know, um, this great punishment because of their, their, their disrespecting the Quran. Allah says in, in the next verse now, right? Zalika Jazau a'da illa anar. This is the jaza, this is the, the, the punishment for the a'da illa, the enemies of Allah. This is the punishment for the enemies, enemies of Allah. What is the punishment? Anar, the fire of Jahannam. Right? Fiha darul khuld. It will be a permanent home for them. It will be their. The, the yeah. home, huh? yeah. fiha, lahum, lahum, fiha. Sorry, for them, fiha darul khuld. For for them, it will be a home of eternity. They will stay in that fire of Jahannam, because they disrespected Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this, they disrespected, you know, the Quran, and they disrespected the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? This is jazaam, jazaan, a reward. Jaza'am bima kanu bi'ayatina ya jahadun Because they used to Yajhadun Disrespect bi'ayatina Our ayats, our verses, our revelations Not just disrespect But they would, you know, dishonor They would, they would, they would not want to hear They would not want to listen They would not want to follow They would not want anybody else to hear They would try to stop people from listening as well so Allah said, this is the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's enemies, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's enemies, that the fire of Jahannam will be their home forever. A fitting reward. A reward. Jaza'am bima kanu bi'ayatina ya jahadun. Because they rejected the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran. Now those people, the disbelievers, Allah SWT says that they will say, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And the disbelievers, they will say, Rabbana, our Lord, they are asking Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala now, Rabbana, أَرِنَ الَّذَيْنَ Show us those, لَذَيْنَ أَذَلَّانَ Those who misled us, 
Those who misled us and cause us to be in this condition, cause us to disrespect the Quran, cause us to disrespect the revelations. Min al jinn wal ins from the jinnat and from the people, from these two groups of creation, right? From these two groups of creation. So here, you know, it is that they are asking that those people who cause us to be in this position, those leaders, whether amongst the jinns or amongst the human beings who cause us to be in, in this position. And according to one of the Sahabi, Sahaba who gave a tafsir of this, he said that, you know, this is starting from two different places. That amongst the jinns, it is starting from shaitan himself. Allah SWT is saying that these people amongst the jinns who are in the fire of Jahannam, who because they disrespected the ayats of Allah and they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa verses and they found themselves in the fire of Jahannam, that this started from, this started from uh, shaitan himself. And that from the human beings, it started from the son of Adam alayhi salam. Right? The, the son of Adam alayhi salam. Which son you think? What was his name? Keen. Keen. started from Keen. Right, it is hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that indicates that every person who has done some sin, right, that part of the reward like murder, sin like murder, right, part of the, the punishment of that sin goes to Cain because he was the first murderer. Because he was the first murderer. And everybody who commits that sin of shirk, right, goes to shaitan, because shaitan was the first one to commit shirk, right? Because he didn't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people, whether they're jannats or the human beings who are in the fire of jahannam, they are going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show us those people who misled us, whether they were from human beings or they were from mankind, naj'al huma, so that we may tahta aqdamina, we may you know, place, ja'ala to place, we may place, tahta akadamina, right, place them, right, under tahta akadamina, under our feet. In other words, we want to belittle them now. We want to belittle them. Liyakuna minal asfaleen, so that they become the lowest of the low. Minal asfaleen, so that they become the lowest of the low. So that they become those who are even worse than us because they put us in this position. We want to put them in that position as well. So show us those leaders. And many times in the Quran, Allah SWT mentions that the people who are going to the fire of Jahannam, they are asking Allah, don't punish us Allah or don't punish us alone. Punish the leaders as well who brought us here. Punish those who made us come into this condition. And that's why it's so important as well that when a person has taken up that responsibility to guide he must guide with sincerity and honestly and properly because he will be held accountable, more accountable than those who followed him. Because they are asking Allah, if Allah answers that dua of theirs, oh Allah, show us who they are. We want to beg that you Allah punish them more. Right? Tahta aqadamina. Put them under our feet. Make them, another, in other words, lower than us. You're giving us A level of punishment. Give them B level of punishment. So, Allah, right? Show us the jinn and the humans who led us astray, and we will put them under our feet so that they will become among the lowest of the low, meaning in the fire of Jahannam, they will be the lowest of the low. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those people who are the believers, and He says, Inna ladina qalu rabbuna Allah. Certainly, those people who they say, Rabbun Allah. Allah is our Rabb. Allah is our Rabb means someone who creates and someone who sustains as well. Right? Rabb is really one of the special names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not name anybody Rabb. Right? Rabb is a name peculiar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and the sustainer. Inna ladina, those who say, eh? Huh? Rabia, Rabia, I don't know exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but um, maybe, maybe that is feminine. Okay, but um, of course, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone is the Rabb, right? So Allah says, those people who they say Rabbun Allah, Allah is our Rabb, meaning that they acknowledge that Allah alone is the one worthy of worship. 
تَمَسْتَقَامُ And then they remain steadfast upon that. So it's not just about saying Allah is your 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 Rabb, but also about becoming steadfast upon that as well, doing the deeds that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded and staying away from those things Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has has uh, prohibited. Allah says. Right? Nazara means to come down. So, tatanazalu alayhim. It will come down upon them. Al malaika. The angels. The angels will come down upon them. And the angels are going to say to them, Allah takhafu. Khawf is fear. La takhafu. Do not have any fear. Meaning, do not have any fear about what you are going to encounter in the next life do not have any fear about what you're going to encounter in the hereafter wala tahzanu and do not have any huzun hazana to be sad do not have any sadness about what you are going you are leaving behind you're leaving behind your family you're leaving behind your bmw you're leaving behind you know your nice garden you're leaving behind your house don't don't be sad over that because why you are among those people who said Rabbun Allah Allah is our Rabb thumma staqamu and you had steadfastness upon that right so they say wa abshiru the angels will say wa abshiru bashar bashiran glad tidings wa abshiru and receive the glad tidings right Bil Jannah, the glad tidings of the Jannah, Allati Kuntum Tu Adun, those glad tidings of which you had been promised. Meaning in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised you these uh, these gifts, these glad tidings in the Quran and in the ahadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is now going to be for you. So when does this happen? When does this happen? According to one of the commentators, Waqi bin Jarrah, he said that this would happen on three occasions. What, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about when the angels are going to say to you, right? Um, don't have any fear and don't have any grief, right? It would happen on three occasions. First, at the time of death. At the time of death, when the angel of death has come to a person, and a person is now seeing the angel of death around him and then all of the angels surrounding him and he, he feels his soul is coming out. Sakavatul maut it is called. That, that in, a person in the throes of death, he can feel his soul coming out of his body. He can see the angel of death. Now he begins to fear. His mind is thinking, racing. I'm leaving everything behind now. There's no turning back. What am I going to see? Look at this angel. Look at this angel that I'm seeing. Look at these angels. I'm moving on from this world. This is the world that I knew all my life. I'm leaving this world. The angels will say to him, don't have any fear now. Don't worry about what you're going to ahead. Don't have any sorrow. Don't worry about what you're leaving behind. SubhanAllah. The second occasion, in the grave. In the grave. When a person goes into the grave and he's buried, the angels will come and they will speak to him in the grave and tell him, don't have any fear and don't have any sorrow. And thirdly, on the day of judgment when coming out of the graves. On the day of judgment when coming out of the graves. Right? But the believers, right? this is for the believers, of course. The believers, those who say, Inna So this is coming after that. Once you have that, inshallah, then, you know... Um, then inshallah you will get these rewards. Living a life of it. Having these this belief and following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the next verse, verse number 31, Nahnu awliya ukum. That we are your awliya, we are your friends. Right? Fil hayat dunya. Right? We are your friends in the world. In this world you are your, we are your friends. Wa fil akhirah. And in the akhirah we will be your friends as well. Meaning as well that in the graves they will be your friends as well. These malaika, these angels, they were there to support you and protect you from harm. In the world, they will be your companions in the grave. They will be with you on the day of judgment. So in other words, don't feel lonely. Don't feel lonely. You know, people say to me, I don't want to be buried because I fear the loneliness of the grave. 
I don't want to be buried. I'm afraid of the loneliness. I'm afraid of the darkness of the grave. You know, people have said that. They're afraid. They, they rather be they rather be cremated, my other Allah. It's not allowed in Islam. Right? But they're afraid of being in that in that um in that hole by themselves, you know, where I say to them, but you'll be dead, you know, you won't be alive. It's not like you're putting in a hole alive, you will be dead, you know. But they are afraid. They're afraid of going into that hole, subhanAllah. The angels are saying, Nahnu awliya ukum fil hayati dunya. We are your friends in the world. Wa fil akhira. And in the hereafter as well. Walakum. And for you, fiha will be in it, in the hereafter. Ma tashtahi. Whatever you desire. Whatever you desire. Ma tashtahi. Ang fusukum. Whatever your souls desire. Walakum. And for you, fiha in it, in the in the Jannah, ma tadda'un, whatever you have been asking for. Whatever you've been asking for, whatever you've been desiring in the Jannah, you will you will get it, you know. It is stated in a hadith, for example, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in Jannah, if a desire comes to you, to your heart, to eat, the meat of a flying bird. You're seeing a bird there, you started thinking KFC one time. Or well, not KFC, churches or Royal Castle, local bands, all right? No foreign money taken. But we start thinking about that one time, right? You are looking at it, it would immediately fall in front of you, completely cooked, ready to eat. However you wanted it, curry, stew, fried, baked, all of the above together, right? Some narrations have it that the bird would not have been touched either by fire or by smoke, but it would come already cooked. In other words, not coming and you're seeing it cooking in front of you on a stove or anything like that. SubhanAllah. Whatever your hearts desire, whatever halal, and your hearts in the Jannah will only desire halal. You will only want halal. And whatever halal you desire, whatever you ask for, whatever you wish for, it will be given to you. SubhanAllah. Right? So Allah, so this is a real great assurance that Allah is giving in these verses that we mention, you know, um, we mention many times in the funerals because we hope, inshallah, that those people who have died, they will be the recipients of this glad tidings. Allah says, Nuzulan, it will be a gift. Nuzulan min gafoor rahim a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is gafoor, most forgiving, rahim, and most merciful. You say sorry? Right, a gift for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the of who is Allah who is the most forgiving and most merciful. So this is really something you know that uh, that you know we all inshallah hope and look forward to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant all of us that at that time of death in the grave, inshallah, the all three times and, and the rising from the graves as well, that the angels will come, they will give us that reassurance, inshallah, that inshallah, everything is going to be good, inshallah. Right? Allah says in verse number 33, now, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا Kaulan speech, man ahsanu, whose speech is ahsan, is better. مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ Except that one who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, what is better? Than a person calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is better than a person doing the da'wah? What is better than a person reciting the Quran? What is better than a person, you know, who is, you know, um, encouraging others to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Da'a ilallah. And wa amila salihan. And he does good deeds. Who is better than that one who is calling to Allah and does good, does good deeds? Right, Wakala, and he says, In Nani, certainly I am Minal Muslimin. I am of those who are Muslims. I am of those who submit. Right? Who is better than that? Who is better than that? So who is this referring to? Those people who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it refers to anybody who is inviting somebody towards deen, whether they are giving da'wah like through Tabliq Jamaat or some of the other organizations where they go out in the streets and they, they're giving da'wah, whether even through their own actions, they are, you know, their actions are a form of da'wah, their workplace or whatever, 
whether everything that they do and say shows Islam, right? Anybody else it could be referring to, apart from the general public? Anybody else you could think about? Who who is better than the one who, that one who calls to Allah? Who calls to Allah again? The ah, uh, the muazin, the muazin, eh? the muazin. So the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam Aisha radhiyallahu taala and she says that this verse is about the muazins. This verse is about the muazins, those who proclaim the adhan. And acts righteously means that he offers two rakats of salah between the adhan and the ikoma. So this is another point of view. Of course, the general meaning is that everybody from whatever group or organization or being a Muslim in whatever way he is inviting someone towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, he falls in this category. But Aisha says that it is also referring to or it refers to the mu'azins, those who are calling the adhan because it says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ كَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ Who is better than that speech? Or who is better in speech? Or which speech is better? Or whose words are better than that one who is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he does righteous deeds. And of course, righteous deeds is general, but also it refers to that one who, after calling the adhan between the adhan and the ikoma, he performs two rakats of of a salah, it is narrated in a hadith in Abu Dawood that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that the supplication between adhan and ikoma is not rejected. The supplication, whether that supplication is true dua or it is true performing two akats of salah or zikr or Quran or whatever kind of supplication, inshallah, it is not rejected between the adhan and the ikoma. Of course, that's something we need to remind ourselves of because, you know, many times between the adhan and the comma, we let it catch up on the score, and we let it catch up on, you know, what the wife cooking for dinner, and, you know, all different kinds of things. We, you know, in fact, sometimes you go even for Juma, right? After the adhan, before the adhan, lots of talk, you know. Yeah. Now it's time that we really should be spending, trying to yeah, grasp, spending cooling up. grab all these blessings, get all of these blessings. Yeah. After the adhan, you know, perform yeah. two accounts of salah, Form two accounts of um um of salah for the masjid, tahiyatul masjid as well. Perform two accounts of salat al tauba, you know, two nafil accounts of salah, some Quran, some zikr. This is a very important time, very important time. These supplications are not rejected, so it's very important. Inshallah, we utilize this time very very importantly. Inshallah, right? I think I see a lot of people. They will um you know they will pray, they will listen to the adhan and then they will just be waiting around for the comma, right? They wouldn't really pray any sunnah and so on and so on. If you have the time and you know and great blessings in it, you should do that inshallah from the the um the the two akas of Nafil Salah as well. All right, Allah says as well in the next verse now, verse 34. Wala tasta will hasanatu wala sayya. Allah says, La tastawi. Right? La tastawi. Sawiya means to be equal, right? Sawiya. La tastawi. Allah says it is not equal. Al hasanatu, the good. Al hasana, the good. Wala sayyatu, and the evil, the good and the evil are not equal. Right? The good and the evil are not equal. And then Allah says idfa, idfa. Dafa means to ward off, right? To remove, to repel. Idfa billati hiya ahsan. Ward off the evil, in other words, ward off the bad, billati with that which is here, ahsan, which is better. Right? And Allah says, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ Then you, then it shall be, right? فَإِذَا then الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ The one between you, وَبَيْنَهُ And between him, أَدَّاوَةٌ Right? The one who who has been an enemy. Right? The enmity between you and him. Ka'annahu waliyun. It will, it will be ka'annahu. He will become as if waliyun. He will become as if he's a friend, Hamim. A close, intimate friend. A personal friend. Right? So Allah says, Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Repel the evil 
with that which is better. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Then that one in who, with whom you have had enmity ship, right? That one who has been an enemy to you, it will be as though he has become a close friend to you. Subhanallah. This is referring to, right? According to Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, the instruction in this verse is to be patient with one who has been expressing his anger with you. Right? He has become your enemy because he is now upsetting you and becoming vexed with you. To be tolerant and forbearing with him. Right? To be tolerant and forbearing with the one who is being ignorant with you and to forgive the one who has made you suffer. This is what this means. That this verse here, respond to evil. Allah is saying, first of all, is not the good better than the evil? If evil comes upon you, right, are you going to respond with that evil, with more evil? Uh, you know, a tit for tat, you know? Um, you know, that's how we normally think, you know, like if somebody does us some evil, some wrong, some they say something to us, we respond in kind or we go one step further, a little worse. But here Allah is saying that if you could be patient and have tolerance and not respond in kind, then, then that one who has become like your enemy, right, he will become like a close friend. In other words, if you, if somebody upsets you or somebody has come to do you something and you don't respond to them in the like manner, then what are they going to be remain vexed with you for? What are they going to continue to be your enemy for? And this has implications in all kinds of relationships, you know. Imagine your wife or your husband, right? They come to you and they say something. And, you know, once they say something, then the war starts. The war of words starts, right? You want to hit them back harder. Below the belt, you want to go down in that, you know, in that gutter. You want to fight in the gutter. We're going down in the gutter. But Allah is saying, if you repel that evil with better, you say to them, you know, mafi salam. Okay, no problem. I I not going on that word with you. You say what you want to say. Then what are you arguing with you about for again? What, what's the fighter? What's the fighter fight about again? Nah, that has nothing to do with with Islamic world in Sarah. No, 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 no. That is when. That is when people are, uh, you know, taking advantage of your your rights. But this is a case where is a case where there is an argument, and the argument could be stopped by and not continued by being patient, having tolerance. And that one, inshallah, it will be it will be as though he's a close friend. In other words, he will not continue this enmity. Because why are you arguing with you? You know, they say they are saying it takes two to tango, takes two to tango. So if only one person is fighting. Then inshallah, you know the other person won't fight as well. So here Allah is saying, respond with evil with goodness. Respond evil with goodness. And inshallah, when you do that, you know, it will be, it will, it, it, it will be better for both parties. But it is not easy to do. Eh? Because it's like it's against our human nature. Our human nature is to start to defend. Allah says in the next verse, Wama you Lucky I means to meet, right? You will not be able to meet that standard. You will not be able to come to that. You will not be able to do that. Except that one who has patience. And that's why, that's why you know, part of the training of Ramadan is, is that, you know, when evil meets you, Right? When evil meets you, you don't react. And that's why in Ramadan, they say Ramadan is a month of patience as well. When you ask for a chubby and you get a water, when you wanted an orange and you get a grape, chubby, right? You know, and you say, you know what? What the hell? I don't drink grape. I only want an orange. Instead of doing that, now you say, you know what? I will take what I get, man. SubhanAllah. I'm not going to react. I'm not going to get vexed. I'm not going to, you know, when I ask the man for a cold one, he give me a warmish one. All of these things are little lessons, little, little lessons, you know. One day I remember I was in the car park and I parked bad. And I went downstairs and we had, because we had program after Fajr. When I went downstairs, that man hit me so hard, not physically, yeah. He told me so many things about parking bad, you know. 
so many things. Uh, I was wrong. I was wrong, right? I parked bad, but I was late or whatever, and I maybe blocked him. But the point is, though, that if I had a little bit, if he had a little bit of patience, you know, and say, you know, he fasted in Ramadan, he just come with a Darish lesson, and you know. But then again, eh, it was my fault because maybe the man had to go to the washroom. Maybe the man had a diarrhea. Maybe he had an appointment. Maybe something had an emergency and I blocked him, right? And he didn't know, you know, so it could have been all of that as well. But this is where we learn patience in Ramadan. Don't get a book. Don't get a Don't get physical in. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. It was, it was. Uh... <laughs> it's it. Well, Allah says, well, my, you love, oh, ha, right? Except that one who is patient. Well, my, you love, oh, ha, and it will not be given, will not be met, you'll not, you'll not reach that standard. Except those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do means to, to be the owner, had, to mean, had, had means a portion, to be the owner of a portion of goodness, a portion of good fortune, a portion of, you know, in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you that, um, that, 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 that good fortune, that, that quality, that character to be one who is fortunate enough to have that sabr. And we will get that sabr when we, when we, when we, when we really benefit from Ramadan, when we really benefit from trials and tests, that it really teaches us to be patient. So Allah says it will not be attained except by those who are patient, and those who are fortunate, right? And then Allah says, "Wa imma yanzaganaka," right? Mina shaitan. And if it is that 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 you know, nazaga means to incite evil. Nazaga to incite evil. Wa imma yanzaganaka mina shaitan. And if it is that you are tempted by the shaitan, you are whispered to by the shaitan. Give him it. He deserve it. He wrong. Don't, let him, don't hold back. If you are you are you are you are you are, you are tempted by the shaitan, whisper shaitan whispers to you, right? Nazgun, he whispers to you an evil suggestion, right? You know, he you know he give you a bad drive, hit him a bumper, ram his bumper. If it is shaitan whispers to you an evil, then Allah says, Fasta id billah. Seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahu huwa sami'ul alim. Verily, Allah alone is all hearing, all knowing. Allah sees what you do. What do you do then? Turn, turn. And we 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 we, we, we neglect to say enough. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim is not only for beginning to read the Quran, eh? We say it in the beginning to read the Quran to prevent, you know, shaitan from making us feel that we can't read anymore, we're tired or whatever. But a'udhu billahi minash shaitan, which means every time we are tempted, right, to do something evil, we seek refuge with Allah from Satan, the accursed. Right? Allah is saying here, fasta'idh billah, seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He alone is the hearing and he alone is all knowing. Right? So this is a really interesting, you know, uh, uh, verses like these, you can write a whole course about character building and, and how to deal with people and management and in, on these verses because so many lessons are learned and steps are given. But, you know, because of time, we just run through it, inshallah, you know. But um, this is, I think, enough. So let's go to verse number 37. Allah says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And from amongst his signs, 719, eh? is answer 25. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ Alaylu wa nahar are the night and the day. From among the signs of Allah are the night and the day. Right? Wa shamsu wal qamar and the sun and the moon. Right? The sun and the moon. Allah says, La tasjudu li shams. Do not prostrate. Do not make sajjas. Allah says in the, the, the Rusul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in hadith as well, do not make sajda to the sun. Or to the moon, make sajda to Allah alone who has created them. La tasjudu li shamsi wa la lil qamar. Do not make prostration to the sun and to the moon. Wasjudu lillah, but prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
allazi khalaqahunna the one who has created the both of them in kuntum iyahu ta'budun if it, it indeed it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that you worship right so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us about the importance of not committing shirk not turning to any of the symbols the sha'ir of allah and worshipping those things and we can extend that from not just the sun and the moon and the day and the night but the material things that we want to worship and today you know people fall into all kinds of traps for, for material things there are some people who will not be caught dead except wearing a nike because nike is a symbol they become obsessed with that you know these are these are not acts of shirk but they are acts where you know you are becoming obsessed with something that could lead to shirk right it could lead to shirk you have to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the only one being worthy of worship and this is also the reason why you know we do not perform our salah during the zawal time to give any indication that a person might be worshiping the moon when it is at its zenith which was the way of previous uh, peoples and also we do not perform maghrib at the time of sunset when the sun is setting in case people decide to say that you know we are you know we are we are following the um, the, the, the the sun when it is setting right or even the moon but we pray you know um, after sunset and after the zawal and so on as well right but allah is telling those people who are the disbelievers about that right for in is Takbaru, but if it is they have kibar and pride, if it is they are arrogant, falladina in the rabbik, then those who are in the rabbika, those who are close to the Lord, those who are the true believers, those who are the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, you subbihuna lahu billayli wa nahar. They are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala night and day. وَهُمْ لَا يَسْعَمُونَ They do not become tired. They do not become tired of that, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone as well. Alright, last verse inshallah we'll do before we stop. Allah says, huh? Yeah, right, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it inshallah, yeah. So this um, is a verse of sajda as well, right? This is one of the verses of sajda. So inshallah, we'll make sure and do the um, sajda tilawat inshallah. Where, where because we recited this this word la yes um but some say it's verse thirty seven and some say it's verse thirty eight but you can do the, you do thirty eight already so just um just just recite just do this last sajda tilawat right and if you don't know how to do it, you'll just say to the, how to do it afterwards inshallah as well let's just do verse thirty nine right women ayatihi and from among his signs anna katara is that you see al ard you see the earth right. Qashi'atan, you see the earth, Qashi'atan, you see it, you know, um, dead, barren, right, Qashi'atan, fa'idha angzalna alayha alma, angzalna alayha alma'a, but you see, when we send down, angzalna alayha, we send down upon the earth, alma'an, we send down water upon the earth, right? Ihtazat. It is, ihtazat means it shakes from hazza to shake up. It becomes stirred, stirred with life, right? Well, rabbat and it begins to go. Inna alladhi ahyaha. Certainly, alladhi ahyaha, the one who gives it life, right? La muhyil mauta. Surely that one gives life to the dead. That one who gives it life, certainly that one, you know, can revive the dead. Innahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Certainly he is shayin over everything qadir, most powerful. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws an example that we have discussed before. About the, the earth when it is dry and barren, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the rain, it stirs back up the life. You look at it, it's gone. You don't even plant any seeds in it. Right? But there are seeds there in hibernation waiting to you know germinate just as soon as there is some little bit of moisture. It is an amazing miracle over and over and over again that you see. 
right? If you have barren land, you didn't plant any plants in it and it's dried, but then a little bit of rain falls in it, there are seeds of weeds and all kinds of trees and plants in there waiting just to germinate. And that in itself is an amazing thing. So last one that says among his signs is that you see the earth like that. And therefore, this is a refutation for those people who ask the Prophet if it is that, you know, um, we die, can Allah bring us back to life again? Allah is saying he brought the dead earth to life. Why can't he bring you to life again? We stop here today, inshallah. We have refreshments. Don't leave. Right? And then the Adhan is calling, inshallah. But I want to cover enough verses so that we will cover um, next week, inshallah. Um, the rest of Surah Fusilat, inshallah. Right? So say for refreshments. Those of you who are watching online, Jazakallah. We will close off now, inshallah. And um, just for those of you who have to do the Sajjah Tilawat, you make sure you have wudu. Turn towards the Qibla. Make the intention Sajjah Tilawat. Say Allahu Akbar. And you just go down in Sajjah and say Subhanahu Rabbi Al-A'la three times. Or one, well, three times or five times or how many times Yaqa is going to say again. Right? Inshallah. So just do the Sajjah Tilawat because we recited a verse of Sajjah. Some say it is verse 37. Some say it is verse 38. But Inshallah the uh, Hanafi says it's verse 38. So... We've already covered this city as well, inshallah. <laughs>